Flyers Sabres goes to a shootout, and it's all down to Casey Middlestat, denied by Brian Elliott, who comes up huge. The Flyers get the 5-4 shutout, excuse me, shootout win at the Wells Fargo Center, their first win at Wells Fargo Center since March 7th of 2020, which also came against the Buffalo Sabres. Hello and welcome to Flyers Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. I'm Taryn Hatcher, joined by Al Morganti. Al, Flyers get the win in front of their fans, first time in over a year, but it didn't feel like there was much to celebrate after this game. Well, there was good, there was bad, there was ugly, and that nasty hit to start at the beginning of the game. But bottom line, I, I'm coming away from this. I really liked their attitude in the comeback. You could just see it in their faces, the emotion. You saw Elliott after that big save. I think, I know there were some rough spots, a lot of rough spots in this game, but to me, the attitude to come back again, they came back against Pittsburgh and, and within the week here, you could just see it's like, this is important. We have to have this. And bottom line to me is the game they had to have that they got behind and weren't playing well, they dug in and got it done. So I'm not that unhappy with a lot of the other stuff that went on in between. All right, let's welcome in Jim Jackson and Keith Jones on the crossover now. JJ Jonesy. Jonesy's got his jacket on. He's ready to bail on us. Ready Thank you, go. Jonesy, for sticking around. Really appreciate it. Uh, first question to you guys. Flyers, so big of them. <laughs> Flyers are the better team on paper, and at the end of the game, they executed like they were the team that, that had more talent. So my question is, what was wrong at the beginning of the game and throughout parts of the middle of this game that they fell to a deficit behind this Sabres team that's been pretty unimpressive lately? Yeah, they've been unimpressive, but I, I, they weren't unimpressive tonight. Terry, they came out with a lot of energy. I, I almost think the en injury to Eichel in a weird way energized this team. They liked having Cousins in the middle, and he gave them some energy. Taylor Hall played uh, as well as he's played against the Flyers this year at least. And, and I, I just thought that they played better. Uh, you always celebrate a win, especially in this season where so many things can go wrong at any time from a health standpoint. Uh, the Flyers really battled in this game, and, and uh, this won't look impressive, a 5-4 shootout win over a, a Sabres team that hasn't won in a long time, if you look at it that way. But it is impressive in that they had to fight through a lot of things. They, they kept pushing, they kept pushing. These are the kind of wins that you have to have at some point during the season, Jonesy, where things aren't really going your way, but you, you kind of find a way, as we said with Scott Lawton. Yeah, I, I thought some of the defensive coverage in the first period wasn't great. Yeah. I, maybe you take the team that you're playing against a little bit uh, for granted, but then I thought the Flyers had a lot of individual players that really started to perform really well. Uh, Jake Voracek stood out to me. I thought he was excellent. I thought he was extremely determined and found plenty of ways to create offensive opportunities and cause problems for the Sabres. Sabres were on their heels in the third period. They were trying to find a way to win a game, and that's been a real difficult thing for them. So you knew they were going to give it everything that they had with that lead in the third period, and the Flyers found a way to tie things up and eventually win it in the shootout. If they lost the game in the shootout, it would be a major disappointment. The fact that they found a way to win, you celebrate it, you move on, and you like the fact that you played the game with energy. Uh, they had that. They just didn't make very good decisions early on, but found a way to get the job done. You also have to like uh, Goss to spare, you know, on the power play coming back. And after he had a, one rough uh, shift in the last weekend, but he came back from it. And it looks like he's really rediscovered something, uh, a very confident look on, on his play, especially on that power play. Yeah, Alan, I think Elaine Vigneault's done a really good job with him. There was some games where he played with Provorov and seemed to start to gain some confidence, both offensively and the way that he was playing defensively. Uh, kind of a rough game against the Pittsburgh Penguins and then slotted again in a different uh, pairing and found a way to be continually uh, creative on the power play. And that's something that we saw Shane excel at, uh, excel at early in his career, finding power play goals and getting shots through from the point and also causing problems in give-and-go situations where he would jump into the slot and create an opening for a scoring chance. That looks like it's coming back now, and that's great news for the Flyers. Just looks like a confident player, right, Jonesy? I mean, confident in his legs. He's had the surgeries. He's, he's told all of us that uh, he hasn't felt better from that standpoint in a long time, uh, hasn't felt uh, that, that well. So uh, he looks confident in his body, as we've talked about uh, on these shows, and, and obviously confident in his play. And uh, it's funny, even as a defenseman, that puck goes in a couple of times, all of a sudden your confidence kind of goes up, and he scored all four of his goals here over the last two or three weeks. So uh, he's getting that confidence back, and he is one of those guys. There's certain players that have to have a swagger about them in order to be effective. He's one of them, and he's getting that swagger. 
Speaking of players who need some maybe swagger, some extra confidence to be effective, it's the topic that everybody's talking about that we generally don't want to try to address and talk about ourselves. Carter Hart pulled after the first period, allowing three goals on eight shots on goal. And then Brian Elliott comes in, 11 saves on 12 shots, and blanks Dahlien and Middlestat on the shootout. Guys, where do you think AV and the Flyers go from here in terms of trying to get Hart going versus trying to get points with Elliott? Well, you're going to try to get points. I mean, this is a... a battle for a playoff spot in a very tough division. The Flyers have played pretty well given all they've gone through this year and they're still on the outside looking in. Uh, so you're going to play both. The, the one thing, Taryn, is that you look at this schedule, both goalies are going to play a lot uh, no matter what. There's just so many games in such a short period of time. So you're going to have to get both goalies going and you're going to go, you know, in some games with a guy who you think is playing better at that time and right now Brian Elliott's playing better than Carter Hart. Um, Jonesy, the poll here in this game, do you think that was, well, we're really playing poorly defensively and this isn't really where you want Carter Hart right now as he tries to find his confidence or was he saying Carter needs to be better? I, I thought it I, might have been the former. Uh, yeah, I think it's Carter needs to be better and otherwise you would have pulled him right after the third goal. The, the pull was after the period yeah. and I think it was more about, uh, hey, you're not playing well and yeah. right now uh, Brian Elliott's gone from a luxury to a necessity. And that's not the way you thought it would be when this uh, season started. You loved the fact that you had depth in goal and you had a mentor slash very good goaltender still there and Brian Elliott. But Brian Elliott's the guy right now, and he has performed extremely well, found a way to win this game. And points are at a premium right now, and it's not going to get any easier with the Capitals coming in back-to-back -back games. So I would be looking for Brian Elliott uh, a lot more right now than I anticipated before the season started. All right, J.J. Jonesy, thank you so much for joining us here on the crossover. Jonesy, you are free to go, sir. He's free to go and probably have <laughs> bye another bye. flat tire, right? Probably get I'm out of here. Tire. See, you guys. See you guys. Thank you. All right, it's time now for our Colonial Nissan Game Changer, and we are talking about that goal that tied this game up down from Shane Gostas Bear on Couturier. the power the play. Fourth goal this in last eight games for Ghost. He had five and 42 games last season. This is big for Ghost. Yeah, it's big for the Flyers. It's it big for him and big for the Flyers to get that power play going with that rocket of a shot. And you can just tell he's a different player here. And boy, do they need this guy to have his A game. And he's got that A game cranked up. All right, coming up on Flyers Post Game Live, we will hear from head coach Elaine Vino on this shootout victory for the Flyers. That's after this break.